Hello everybody, Napkin99 here, and welcome back to the Pixelmon Let's Play series. It has been a little bit. My break to work on the vanilla Let's Play series took a little bit longer than expected, but we are back with the Pixelmon series. And also the chests behind me are green and red because I'm recording this on Christmas. Uh -huh. In the time that I've been gone, there have been a couple updates, nothing too, too major. Besides the oval charm now works where it didn't before, so we can get eggs two times quicker from the ranch blocks, so we'll definitely be doing something with that today. As for our main plans today, we are going to be making another base. Not as intense as this one, not that this one is super intense. It's going to be more confined and it's going to be an ultra space because we're going to be starting our shiny project trying to get some different shiny Pokemon. So down here, I have just some resources. I have some diorite because we're going to be building with that, even though it's ugly, but it's pretty much the only white block that we have easily available because quartz is not that easy to get. We have our breeding stuff here so we can do some breeding. I'm probably going to start with dittos first. And then I have a bunch of other random stuff to make surviving in our ultra base a little bit easier. So let's get our necrozma out and open a wormhole and head it to ultra space. So right where we come out from our base is where we're going to be setting up. This is also where we have our fossil machines from when we were trying to get the hidden ability on Amora. Um, but we do have one small problem that we do need to take care of before we can really start working on this base. And that is the end city over here. We need to probably clear the shulkers out of here so we're not worrying about those while we're here. And probably also taking care of this lava. Alrighty, so now that we've got the end city cleared, the first thing I want to do is make our fossil stations here, since we already have the fossil machines placed. I brought some fossil cleaners, as well as our stash of fossils from when we are trying to get our Amora. So let's get some of these set up, and we'll probably just try to squeeze them in between here. So should probably do something like that, I think believe this works. Maybe able to put this on top here. And if we get one of our fossils, just get one of these ones, put it in here, and it starts spinning. So that should work. So I think behind our fossil stuff here, we're going to put a wall. We're going to do polished diorite for pillars and probably regular diorite between for a foundation and then between the pillars we're going to put glass panes and then i think for the floor we're probably going to do birch planks we'll probably look decent with this yeah um so i was Working on our ultra base here a little bit, and I put our bell down so we would have a chance for it to start ringing while we're working here. And it actually did start ringing, so we're going to be fighting Ho-Oh -Oh soon. Okay, so it looks like right at 7 o'clock on the clock is when it spawns. Looks like actually a fairly decent sized one too. So let's try a quick ball, because I don't really have much else that's going to be really effective for this Pokemon besides my timer balls, if those are working. So we may end up having to master ball this, and it knows recover. Oh, goody. Alright, we're master balling it. It keeps healing up, it's killed all of our catchers, it's full health. We've got nothing else we can do with this guy. But at least we've got our ho -Oh. And another th cool thing, our Ho-Oh also has the sociable mark. Alrighty, so I've pretty much finished the exterior of the base here. It's kind of hard to see through the fog at the moment, and with the Choodle trying to battle us. 
but we went for a kind of modernish kind of look. I don't know. I was just kind of placing stuff around. So the reason we have so much space over here is because we're doing a little bit of a breeding area back here. We're going to have four spots and there's two floors of this. And then we'll two stack the ranch blocks that will have a total of 16 ranch blocks in this building. And then we also have a spot over here where we're going to put a 10 by 10 breeding area using our ranch upgrades. I just haven't brought in a sea lantern yet. So let's go ahead and get our ranch blocks in here. And we'll plop one down and stack the other on top. Um, so it looks like some weird Porygon 2 special texture just spawned in our base. Didn't know this was a thing. Let's catch it, I guess, and see what the heck this special texture is. Spirit form? Huh. I'm pretty sure those are only supposed to spawn in graveyards. And this shouldn't be a graveyard because this is new terrain. Unless, of course, there is a graveyard here in the seed after graveyards are added, and maybe it's just going off of coordinates alone. Maybe I'll load up a creative test of this world and see if that's what's happening here. So after doing some further testing, it seems that for some odd reason, all of Ultra Space is basically a giant graveyard when it becomes midnight. So normally the spirit textures only spawn at midnight in graveyards in certain biomes. So if we make some blocks here and we do check spawns legendary, you'll see that we can actually get Reggie Alecki to spawn, even though that normally only spawns in man-made blocks in graveyards at midnight. It is midnight, by the way. I have the daylight cycle turned off. So we can get Reggie Alecki to spawn in man-made blocks in ultra space at midnight with the spirit form, of course. But yeah, anyways, spirit textures are able to spawn pretty much in all of ultra space. You can find graveyards around here. I don't know where any are at around here at the moment. But you can find them, but you don't necessarily need them in Ultra Space. So for upgrading our ranch blocks here, I think we want to go in the positive X direction and the negative Z direction. Yep. You kind of see the squares extend over our fences here. We're going to do the same thing for this one up here. Positive X, negative Z. Now they both should be using these blocks up here. So the first project I want to work on in terms of breeding in our ultra base is getting a bunch of max IV dittos, or trying to at least. So we have our ones with the one IVs. We do have one with two IVs. I think we have a second one. Yeah, there we go. And maybe even a third somewhere. So we're going to start with those ones and kind of work our way through until we get some with three IVs and four IVs. But it's going to be a lot of work because we get a random Pokemon, not necessarily a Ditto. So we're going to try our best here to make this happen. So we've got all of our Dittos in place here. We only actually had enough with Max IVs to fill this first floor, but the second floor we have filled with Dittos anyways, just in case maybe we get a random IV or just get more random Pokemon in general. And as you can tell, it's very noisy around here. Um, so the Oval Charm is definitely working because these, the first set we put in here is already on purple and it's only been a few minutes, so these should be ready in about 18 minutes or so, 18-19 minutes, so definitely a lot quicker than we were going before. Random Palkia intermission because I found a time space altar while flying around hatching my eggs. Got him. Alrighty, so we're going to be taking a little bit of a break here from our ultra base, but we've got quite a few ditto eggs ready to hatch here because we're going to be flying around a bit. So I went ahead and evolved all the Pokemon I could that we have. 
so now if you see, we're only missing 106 more Pokemon out of the entire game, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, one of the ones I did evolve was our Type Null into Sibylee, because we do have two Type Nulls. So I got that one evolved into Sibylee. So we actually only have, I believe, eight Legendaries left. One, two, three. Okay, we have nine Legendaries left. So not too bad. And we're actually going to be completing our Pokedex today. So this starts Operation Shiny Charm. Oh. So I made a list of all the Pokemon I still need in my Pokedex. And not really just in my Pokedex, but ones that we're missing in here as well. Because like some of these we have Shinies for. Like we have a Shiny Drifloon, but we don't have a regular Drifloon in these spots. So there's like empty spots. So... I'm going to be kind of doing a little bit of a montage here as we catch the rest of our Pokemon, and I hope you enjoy. Alrighty everyone, so we have one Pokemon left to catch. Can you guess which it is? Uh -huh. It is Arceus, basically the creator of all Pokemon, the god Pokemon, whatever you want to call it. So we have our 17 plates here. Let's go ahead and get our inventory organized a little bit here. I can click the right keys. So basically you have to get one of all 17 plates and then you have to take them to this arc chalice which can be found in Desert Hills I believe. So you just right click all of these and I think stuff is supposed to start swirling around here once we put them all in. I apologize for the noise, it seems the power of summoning Arceus is making things fall off of my shelves. I think something's supposed to start swirling. Hello? Cup. Uh, game? Oh, there it goes. We didn't get the particle effect for some reason, but we have the Azure Flute, and that is the important part. And we're going to take our Azure Flute to the Time Space Altar, but we're not going to use it on the Time Space Altar. We're going to use it in front of it, and that should start summoning Arceus. There, again, should be particles, but there's not. There's just an Arceus floating out of the floor. We should be able to get this guy with a heavy ball. I think it does work on him. Yeah, well, the first one will do it. Awesome, so now, if we can see the world, our Pokedex is complete. And I thought we would have gotten an achievement for that or something. Aha, I left the world and came back in. We get the shiny charm, and we get the badge 
Pokemon Master because we are indeed the Pokemon Masters. Oh. This, of course, also means that our legendary wall is now fully filled up. Take a look. It's beautiful. And we also have all of our pages, the numbered pages at least, filled completely up with Pokemon and the right ones at that. Uh -huh. And to celebrate us finishing the Pokedex, let's make ourselves a nice a warm bowl of curry. We gotta make our cooking pot first. We gotta place it on the ground. And we gotta put some berries in it. So I just picked out some random ones. I don't really know how to make a good curry. I can't cook in real life either. I burnt Easy Mac one time. Believe it or not. So we put our berries in. We light it with the flint and steel. And then we start fanning it, I think, by right clicking. You gotta do a little bit quicker. I think you want more flame particles and less smoke. And then after 15 seconds, it turns to stir mode. And you want the purple particles, but you don't want it to spill. Mm hmm. Did I get a curry? Where's my curry? There it is. It flew over here. Spicy curry. Milsery class. And we're gonna go ahead and feed it to our Zapdos. So Milsery class is actually like kind of like middle ground there. Oh, my elevator's broken again. So it should... It healed our Zapdos up 100% of its health. So that's a good thing. It's also supposed to give them happiness and XP. So we got a little bit of XP. And his happiness didn't go up. Which I think it should have. But I'm not sure. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for me today. I apologize for the delay in this video. Uh, with the vanilla series starting, catching a bunch of legendaries and being sick. Uh, it's been a lot of stuff getting in the way of getting this video out, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Um, also, let me know in the comments what some of your favorite moments from the Pixelmon series are, because I would like to know. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.